guys, so welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today's video, we will discuss another topic related to liability accounting. We're in the focus of the discussion will be the accounting for customer loyalty program. So let's start. Okay, so let's talk about customer loyalty program. Customer loyalty program is a marketing strategy designed to encourage customer to continue to shop at or use services of a business associated with the program. So normally, this is a way or this is one of the marketing strategies being employed by the entity or in order to retain the loyalty of their customers or for the customers to keep on buying on them. So on the current setup or sa ating business structure ngayon, maraming customer loyalty programs ang naka-employ. But for this specific video, mag-focus lang tayo sa tatlong popular na customer loyalty programs. So the first customer loyalty program that we will focus on is the premium item or gifts. So under this customer loyalty program, the buyer will get a free gift or free item in case he reaches a certain number of purchases or a certain amount of purchase. Example nito yung Starbucks, di ba? Sa Starbucks, if you want to have a free planner during Christmas, so you have to purchase a certain number of coffee represented by stickers. So, another customer loyalty program na pag-uusapan natin for this video is a discount coupon. So, a discount coupon is also considered as a customer loyalty program in order for a buyer to keep on buying with the company or with the business. Example nito is yung si Uniqlo. So, let's say for example, uh, Uniqlo is providing 20% discount for your future purchases in case you purchase a minimum amount of 5,000 pesos. So, ayun po yun. So, another one, we have the loyalty points. So, ito medyo familiar tayo dito. If you say loyalty points, ang best example na I see, SM Megamon or Robinson or um, Mercury Dog Store. Under loyalty points, so every time that you purchase from the business or from the uh, mall, you will be eligible to points. So, sa SM, in, ang kanilang policy, if I'm not mistaken, is that every 200 pesos worth of purchase is equivalent to 1 point. And that one point is equivalent to one peso, uh, which can be used to their future sale. So in that case, in order to retain or in order, in order for the uh, buyer to keep on buying to SM Mega Mall, so they we are in, uh, they are lure because of the pointing system. So for accounting purposes, we discuss po natin. Siyempre, at the end of the day, this uh, customer loyalty program does not provide any additional cost outlay on the part of the buyer at least, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, there will be a future economic benefit loss on the company if the buyer or if the purchaser or if the purchaser uh, opted to uh, avail this kind of customer loyalty program. That's why, kaila, nagkakaroon po tayo ng tinatawag na liability. So, ayan po yung pag-uusapan natin sa video na ito. Okay, so let's now proceed to the first one which is premium item or gifts. So, best example natin kanina dyan is yung Starbucks wherein the customer will be eligible for a free planner in case they have purchased the required number of purchase represented by stickers. So, in accounting, there are two possible accounting standards to use in order to account for this kind of transaction. The first one, we can use IES 37 under the current practice, which is under provision. And starting January 1, 2018, we are mandated to use IFRS 15 under revenue from contract with customer. So under IS 37 provisions, these are the major accounting events to know. So ito po yung medyo alam na natin kasi related lang din naman to sa warranty which is also, uh, which is also using IS 37 before IFRS 15. So under IS 37 provision, these are the uh, accounting events to note. So, number one, we have the incurrence of sale. So, since uh, they will just be eligible to have a free planning kapag nag-purchase sila kay Starbucks, so therefore, the first uh, obligatory or obligating event for the provision is the incurrence of sale. So, under after incurrence of sale, we have the purchase of the premium. So, this is related to the purchase of the related planning. Since the planner will be used as a premium item, to be given to our client in case they have reaches the required number of units per chase, okay? Then the third one is the redemption of the premium wherein ito naman na si buyer pupunta na kay Starbucks para i-claim yung kanilang planner kapag na nila yung number of stickers required. The last one, since we are dealing with provision at the end of the year, 
as uh, based on the accounting principle of matching principle, wherein the related uh, expense must be recognized uh, parallel to the recognition of sale, which is under the influence of sale. So at the end of the year, we have to make sure that the proper provision is recognized. So in the behind, at the time of sale or at the year of sale, there should be a provision to be made. Okay? So that's the accounting procedure, or accounting events related to IRS 37. Wag ang ating uh, customer loyalty program ay related sa premium items or gifts. So how about if we follow IFRS 15 or revenue from contact from customer? So under IFRS 15 or revenue from contact with customers, actually there are only three accounting events that we have to know. Ang focus kasi ng IFRS 15 is the recognition of revenue and not the recognition of the related expense. So under IFRS 15, the premium expense is not part of the marketing expense uh, kasi doon sa provision, ang ating pong premium ay related yan sa ating operating expense na related sa sale. However, in IFRS 15, the planner o sa case ni Starbucks is not considered as a marketing expense but part of the sale of the company. However, uh, based doon sa procedure nga natin, the planner can only be uh, redeemed in case na makumpleto nila yung sticker so therefore, doon pa lang sa incurrence of sale natin, uh, the first accounting event, there should be a proper treatment of the value related to the planner and the value related to the copy purchase. So there should be a separation between the amount related to the copy and related to the related to the planner. So under IFRS 15, so magkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag na outright sale and we also have an unearned sale. The outright sale should be uh, related to the copy and the unearned sale or the unearned revenue portion should be related to the planner. So another accounting event related to IFRS 15 is we have the purchase of premium. So in this case, same lang din ang entry yan doon sa provision this IF 7 And since we need to buy a, a planner in order to give them to our client in case they want to redeem that with, redeem it from us, diba? Then the last one is the redemption of the premium. So, sa redemption of the premium, this is where the uh, re recognition of income should be recognized. Okay? So, sa case kasi natin sa provision, automatic lang yan, uh, binabuhasan lang natin yung liability and pinicredit natin yung uh, amount or yung related dun sa ating uh, premium items. So, under IFRS 15, since the related uh, item has been redeemed, so, dito na po natin i-recognize yung related revenue accounts. So as you can see, there is no uh, accounting event related to the recognition of provision because under IFRS 15, we are more concerned on the recognition of sale rather than uh, recognition of revenue rather than the recognition of provision. So in case the nagkakaroon ng redemption, so automatic we have to recognize the related uh, inventory account dun sa premium and of course, we have also to recognize the related revenue. Okay, so let's have an illustration. So let's say, for example, we have Sweet Company, and Sweet Company is into selling of Ensaimada, and they sell it by boxes. So according to their customer loyalty program, so the client or the customer need to purchase 10 boxes of Ensaimada because each box has a one coupon. So they need 10 coupons in order to be eligible for a free coffee cup with additional payment of 5 pesos. Okay? So that's their uh, customer's loyalty program. So these are the information on Sweet Company regarding this uh, transaction. So during 2020, 200,000 boxes of Ensaimada were sold at 25 each. And during 2021, 250,000 boxes were sold, still at 25 each. So as a way of customer loyalty program, so Sweet Company purchased a coffee cup amounting to 25, 25 pesos each on 2020, 5,000 units, and to 2021, 8,000 units. And during 2020, 40,000 coupons were redeemed by the customer in order to get the 25, uh, in order to get the free uh, copy cup with additional payment of 5 pesos each. And during 2021, 70,000 coupons were redeemed. So these are the requirements. So first requirement, we are required to provide journal entries relating to 2020 and 2021 if the premium item is considered as premium expense, that's why we need to follow IAS 37. 
So, requirement number two, we have to determine the balances of the following accounts for 2020 and 2021. Namely, premium cap, which is an asset account, premium expense related to the uh, customer loyalty program, and the estimated liability premium cap. Okay, so let us prepare the journal entries as required. So, these are the facts earlier. So, as I mentioned earlier, under IAS 37, there are four major accounting events. Namely, inference of sale, second, purchase of premium, third, redemption of the premium, and fourth is the recognition of provision. So, punta tayo dun sa inference of sale. So, record lang natin muna yung sale as is. So, based on the data, uh, 25, per, 25 pesos is the selling price and the amount uh, and the number of boxes sold is 200,000 boxes. So, record lang tayo ng debit cash, 5 million, and credit sales, 5 million. Nakuha natin yung 5 million, 25 pesos each box, and we, uh, we have sold 200,000 boxes. Then, for the purchase of the premium, which is the coffee cup, based on the data, 25 pesos is the purchase price per item, and we have purchased 5,000 units. So, therefore, we just need to debit premium cup, amounting to 125,000, which is an asset account, then credit cash, 125,000. And for the redemption of premium, simply look at uh, the redemption, uh, the actual coupons redeem. So based on the data earlier, ang sinabi dyan, it requires 10 coupons before a premium item can be given to our client. So since coupons redeem is 40,000 pesos, so the journal entry should be debit cash, 20,000, then debit premium expense, 80,000, and credit premium cap 100,000 pesos. So, 20,000 pesos was arrived using this formula. So, in order to get the cash received, simply look at the data above again. So, as you can see, we have the, the actual redemption, the actual people saving is 40,000 pesos, and it requires 10 coupons before a premium item can be sold. So, therefore, 40,000 divided by 10, so the amount of, or the number of, uh, premium item to be redeemed by our customer is 4,000 uh, 4, units. Then, since required si seller magbayad ng 5 pesos, so 4,000 times 5 pesos equals 20,000 pesos. And for the premium expense, so this is the formula. So to get the premium expense, same procedure, 40,000 actual of coupons redeemed divided by the required coupons per premium item. So times 25 minus 5 because 5 pesos ay nanggaling yan sa customer and the, the 25 pesos is uh, ayan ang ating purchase price. So therefore, the allotted per premium expense is only the difference between the purchase price minus the amount received which is 5 pesos. So 4,000 units of cup, coffee cup times 20 as premium expense. So the amount to be recorded under premium expense is 80,000 pesos. Then, credit lang tayo ng premium cap, 100,000 pesos, simply 40,000 coupons divided by the required coupons per premium item times the purchase price of the premium cap, which is 25 pesos. The amount to be reflected under premium cap credit, a reduction on the asset account will be 100,000 pesos. For the last part, for the recognition of provision, this is the journal entry. Debit lang tayo ng premium expense, 40,000. Then, credit tayo ng estimated liability, 40,000 pesos. Question, how did we arrive at the 40,000 pesos? So, this is the formula. So, let's say, for example, the, the likelihood of or the rate of redemption is only 30%. So, meaning, out of 200,000 boxes sold, only 30% of that will be uh, go to us, I will go to us and ask for redemption of the premium item. So, ang ating formula is that, so 200,000 pesos, which is the boxes sold, times 30%, so ibig sabihin, the estimated number of coupons to be redeemed is only 6,000 coupons, 60,000 coupons. And based on our data during 2020, 40,000 coupons were redeemed. So, ibig sabihin, the estimated amount of coupons to be redeemed to, uh, to future years or for the coming years is 20,000 coupons. So, 20,000 coupons ang ina-expect natin for the coming years. So, divided by to the required coupons for each premium item times 20, which is the uh, uh, the premium expense required for each premium item because hindi natin gagamitin sa so 25. 
ang gagamitin natin is 20 because uh, 5 pesos is still required by the customer to be paid before we can give the premium item. So, the premium expense allotted for this one is only 20 pesos, which is 25, the purchase price minus the amount received from our customer. So, times 20. So, 20,000 divided by 10. So, ang in-expect pa natin ay 2,000 units of cup of coffee or coffee cup times 20 pesos, which is the amount of premium expense. So, the amount to be recognized is 40,000 pesos. That's why, based on the port accounting event, the uh, adjusting entry should be debit premium expense 40,000, then credit estimated liability 40,000 pesos. Okay, so let's proceed to the next requirement, which is the balance of the account. So, as I review, these are the journal entries that we have made earlier. So, for the balances, these are the balances. The proving cap balance, which is an asset account, is 25,000. So, this represents the remaining 1,000 uh, unclaimed by our customer since we are waiting for them to redeem it. Then, from the premium expense, we have 120,000. Dalawa yung pinanggalingan yan. Yung isa, that's actual redemption, which is 80,000. And next is the recognition of provision, which happened at the end of the year, which is 40,000 pesos. And the estimated liability is only 40,000 pesos. Okay, so let's proceed now to the next year, which is year 2021. So these are the facts. So on year 2021, same procedure with first year. So there are four accounting events. So namely, the inference of sale, purchase of premium, redemption of premium, and last is the recognition of provision. So under incurrence of sale, this will be our entry. So cash, debit, 6,250,000, then credit sale, 6,250,000. So since 250,000 boxes were sold at 25 each. For the purchase of premium, so this will be our entry. So debit premium cap, 200, and credit cash, 200. Since 8,000 copy cap per purchase at 25 pesos each. For the redemption of premium, this will be our journal entry. So debit cash, 35,000. Debit premium expense, 140,000. And credit premium cap, which is an asset account, 175,000. So nakumbit natin yung 35,000 uh, since 70,000 coupons were redeemed and it requires 10 coupons for, for an item to be distributed to our customer. So 70,000 divided by 10, so times 5, which is the amount required to be settled by our customer. So the value of cash received from customer is 35,000 pesos. For the premium expense, the result is 140,000 pesos, same procedure as earlier. 70,000 pesos, uh, 70,000 coupons were redeemed divided by the, the coupons required for premium item times 25 minus 5, which is, ang result natin is 140,000 pesos. For the last part, which is the premium cap, 175,000, so the result will be 70,000 coupons divided by the coupons required for one premium item times the value of the one premium cap, which is 25 pesos, so the result is 175,000 pesos. For the last part, which is the recognition of provision, this will be our journal entry. Debit premium expense, 10,000, and credit estimated liability, 10,000. So, I will present the computation on the next slide. Okay, so this is the formula or this is the solution. So, first, determine muna natin yung expected coupons to be redeemed from 2020 sales. So, I think na-determine na natin yung kanina. We have 20,000 coupons. Then, ilagay lang natin yung estimated coupons related to 2021 sale. Then, the rate of redemption is 30% based on our estimation. So, 250,000 uh, units or boxes times 30%. So, the expected redemption for 2021 sale is 75,000 coupons. So, the total coupons expected to be redeemed for, for the future is 95,000 coupons less the actual redemption of 70,000 coupons. So, the remaining coupons expected to be redeemed is only 25,000 coupons. So, dahil meron na tayong 25,000 coupons, translate natin yan into amount. So, based on the information, so the balance of the liability should be 25,000 coupons divided by, so the coupons required for one premium item, which is 10. So, times natin yan sa 20 pesos, which is the premium expense related to the premium item. So, the result will be 50,000 pesos. Since we already have a balance earlier ng 
uh, liability which is 40,000 pesos, i-less na lang natin yon doon sa ating should be balance of 50,000 pesos. The additional expense is 10,000 pesos. So, the entry, debit premium expense 10,000, then credit, estimated liability 10,000. So, if we, ha if we are having a difficulty, so we can ask help of the T-account. So, ito po yung pag-complete nyo, di ba? So, we can use the coupons and the other one is the estimated liability. Ang coupons, ang ilalagay lang po natin dito is the number of coupons. Then, dun sa baba, yung amount naman. So, under coupons, as I mentioned earlier, we have the beginning balance and the ending balance. Nilagay ko yung beginning balance sa credit side kasi related to doon sa ating estimated liability. Since, since ang ating beginning balance ay nasa right side, so the left side will represent the ending balance. Then we also have the estimated redemption. This is the addition to the beginning balance kasi yung beginning balance related to sa prior year and the estimated redemption is related to the current year which is year 2021. So therefore, doon naman sa left side, we have the actual redemption kasi na binabawasan niya yung coupons to be redeemed. So let's now uh, put the related amount or related number of coupons. So doon sa coupons, the beginning coupons natin is 20,000 which is na-compute natin yan kanina. Then, ang estimate, uh, though, so kung itatranslate natin yan doon sa ating amount, so 20,000 divided by the 10 which is the required coupons per premium item times the premium expense related to that is, is 20 pesos. So, beginning balance natin ng estimated liability is 40,000 pesos which is na-compute na rin natin kanina. So, punta naman tayo dun sa taas sa coupons. So, the estimated redemption is 75,000 pesos or 75,000 coupons. So, paano na-compute ng 75,000 coupons? So, based on the information, 250,000 yung sale natin ng 2021 Multiply natin sa rate of redemption, which is 30%. So, the expected number of coupons to be redeemed related to 2021 sale is only 75,000 coupons. So, i-add natin yan sa beginning balance na 20,000. So, that will be 95,000 coupons. Then, i-forward lang natin yan doon sa left side. So, as you can see, 95,000 yung ating expected redemption. However, based on the actual redemption, only 70% were redeemed. So, ibig sabihin, the number of coupons still redeemable by our client is 25,000 coupons. So, dahil meron na tayong 25,000 coupons, let us translate that into amount. So, sa ating estimated liability. So, the ending balance is 50,000 pesos. So, to compute that, 20, 25,000 coupons divided by the coupons required, which is 10, times 20, which is the premium expense related to the premium item. So, as you can see, the beginning balance is 40,000 and the ending balance is 50,000. So, in order to match the ending balance, so we have to make an additional an expense. So, ibababa lang natin ang 50,000. Lagay natin sa right side. So, we have to make an additional expense in order to meet the requirements, which is the 50,000 estimated liability. So, therefore, we have to add additional 10,000 expense. That's why the entry will be premium expense 10,000 and credit estimated liability 10,000 pesos. Okay, so let's now proceed to the next illustration. So let's us assume the same figures as earlier or same facts, but this time instead of following IS 37, ang gagamitin po natin is yung IFRS 15 which is revenue from contract with customer. So same facts earlier para meron tayong uh, way of comparison. So under IFRS 15, this should be the our entry at the interest of sale. So, debit tayo ng cash, 5 million pesos. Credit ng sales, 4,770,992. Then, credit and earned revenue from the premium item, amount 229,008. So, this is the computation. Because as I mentioned earlier, under IFRS 15, uh, at the incurrence of sale, we have to separate the sale of the main product and the sale of the premium item. Because according to IFR 15, the premium item should be considered as part of sale. But future sale, because uh, i-record lang naman natin yung sale once the client already redeemed their uh, product or the premium item. Since at the exception of sale, wala pa namang na-redeem na item. So, as far as the exception of sale is concerned, so the premium item should be reflected under an earned revenue. So, for this specific problem, let's assume additional data we're in. If the client will purchase separately the pre-item, or bibili nila yung premium item, 
it will cost them 40 pesos. Although we bought that at 25 and they need just to give us 5 pesos para makuha nila yan and, and 10 people. For this time, if they want to purchase it separately, it will cost them 40 pesos. So, gagawin po natin, we have to allocate the sale at between the main product and the premium item. So, before that, why muna natin what, what is the sale ba if the main product will be sold separately and the premium item. So, for the main product, the sale is 5 million. So, 200,000 times 25, which is the selling price per box. And from the premium item, so we just need to get the sale for the month or for the year, which is 200,000 units or boxes times the rate of redemption of 30%, divided by natin sa uh, units required or coupons required for one premium item. So divided by 10, times the selling price of the premium item if it is purchased separately. So that amount is equivalent to 240,000 pesos. So if no premium items is so, uh, is given to our client at, at ibibenta natin yan separately, the total sale should cost, I should be 5,240,000 Pesos. However, since of the loyalty program that being employed by the company, so ang marereceive na amount lang naman natin at the exception is sale is only 5 million pesos. That's why the 5 million pesos must be allocated between the two using prorata. So ipaprorata natin yan, so this will be the allocation basis. So for the main product, so 5 million which is the sale allocated to the main product divided by the, the total sale which is 5,240,000 times the amount to be allocated, which is 5 million, which is the cash received from our customer. So the amount will be 4,770,992. And for the premium, same lang yung case natin. So the sales related to that, if it is sold separately, would be 240,000 divided by the total, which is 5,240,000 times the amount to be allocated, which is 5 million, the cash received from our customer. So, the amount should be 229,008 pesos. So, pag tinotal natin yan, 4770992 and 229008, still, the total sale will be 5 million. So, nagkataon lang, the 5 million will be distributed between the outright sale and the unearned sale, which is part of the premium item. So that's why the journal entry is debit cash, 5 million, then credit sales, 4,770992, and credit unearned revenue, 229,000. And 8 pesos. Okay, so for the next accounting event, so according to IFRS 15, we have to record the purchase of premium. Same lang yan sa IS 37, na re record tayo ng premium cap debit 125, then credit cash 125. So 125 ng galing yan sa 5,000 units or coffee cup times 25 per piece. Then after that, we have the re redemption of premium. So under IFRS 15, we have to consider two things especially if we are into perpetual and veteran system. Number one is the recognition of the earned portion of the uh, revenue, and earned revenue, which is the redemption of the related premium items. And number two is the, the recognition of the asset account being uh, since nga na-redeem na yan ni ating client. So for the redemption premium related to the recognition of the revenue, this is our entry. So the entry will be debit and earned revenue kasi tinatanggal na natin yung portion ng unearned revenue, then we have to credit sales amounting to 152,672. So, paano nakuha yung 152,672? So, ito po yung formula niya. So, ang first na kailangan nyo gawin is to determine the number of coupons redeemed or the number of premium items redeemed. Sa case natin, ang coupons redeemed natin is 40,000 divided by the required, required 10 coupons per item. So, ang total redeemed item natin is 4,000 coffee cup. Then, i-divide lang natin yan sa estimated number of premium items uh, related to the sale, which is 6,000 yan. So, nakuha natin yan. 200,000 times 30%, which is the rate of redemption, divided by the 10 coupons per premium item. So, since nakuha na natin yung, yung total, um, total number of units redeemed and the estimated number of units to be redeemed based on the sale on 2020, so ngayon, gagamit po tayo ng tinatawag natin na prorata. So under sa prorata, so this will be the formula. So 4,000 items, which is the actual redeemed items, divided by the expected redeemable items, which is 6,000. So times lang natin yan dun sa 229,008, which is the 
unearned portion ng ating sale kanina. So, ibig sabihin, the 150,672 should be recognized as part of the sale of the company since the item has already or were already received by our client. So, debit lang tayo doon ng unearned revenue 152,672 then credit ng sale 152,672. And for the second part, which is the direct condition of the asset account, so ganito lang po ang magiging ating entry. So debit lang tayo ng cash, 20,000. Then debit tayo ng cost of goods sold, 80,000. Then credit tayo ng premium account, which is, sabi ko nga, under IFRS, IFRS 15, part siya ng ating inventory. So credit lang tayo ng 100,000. So 100, uh, yung cash, 20,000, kasi nga ang nareceive natin sa client is 5 pesos. And the redeem, for, the redeem item is 4,000. So 4,000 times 5 pesos, meron tayong 20,000. For the cost of food sold, kaya yan 80,000 kasi na um, 20 minus, 25 minus 5. So we have 20 times 4,000. So meron tayong 80,000. For the premium pop, 25 pesos times the uh, redeem units, which is 4,000. So ang result po niyan ay 100,000 pesos. Okay, so let's now proceed to the second year, which is year 2021, under IFRS 15. So, an occurrence of sale, this will be our entry. Same lang din ng first year, which is we need to allocate the earned portion, which is an outright sale, and the unearned portion, which is the sale of the premium item na i-recognize lang natin once the client already redeemed the product. So, we just need to debit cash, 6,250,000 pesos, which is the cost received, 25 times 250,000 pesos. Then credit sales, 5963740. Then credit and earned revenue, 286260 This is the computation. So as I mentioned earlier, we have to distribute the amount between main product and the premium item. So before that, let's first the compute the amount dedicated for them in case the sale is uh, separated from each other. So for the main product, 250000 pesos times 25 we have 6,250,000 and for the premium item, so 250,000 pesos is the uh, box, are the boxes sold times the rate of redemption which is 30% divided by the number of coupons required for one premium item times the selling price of the premium item in case it is sold separately. So the amount uh, allocated to that will be 300,000 pesos. So the total sales should be 6,550,000 pesos. Since the amount received is not 6,550,000 pesos and only 6,250,000 pesos, an allocation method should be employed or we should use the prorated basis. So under the prorated basis, this is the computation. So for the main product, so 6,250,000 divided by the total sales should be sales which is 6,550,000 pesos times the amount to be allocated which is 6,250,000 pesos. The result will be... 5,963,730 and from the premium item 300,000 divided by 6,550,000 pesos times the amount to be allocated which is 6,250,000 pesos ang i-allocate natin sa premium is 286,260 so the total amount is 6,250,000 pesos which is equivalent of the cash received during the exception of sale so ulit ang ating entry ay cash debit 6,250,000 credit sales, 5,963,740, then credit and earned revenue, 286,260. Okay, so let's now proceed to the last part, which is the second year under IFRS 15. So for the second uh, second part, this is the journal entry. So for the purchase of premium, same lang yan ng IS37, wherein we need to debit premium cup, which is an inventory account, amounting to 200,000 pesos, then credit cash, 200,000 pesos. Nakuha natin yung 200,000 pesos. Uh, 8,000 units of copy cup times 25 pesos per item. So, 25 times 8,000, nakuha natin is 200,000 pesos. For the next journal entries, which is the redemption of premium, there are two journal entries to make. Number one is the recognition of the earned portion. And the number two is the recognition of the uh, premium items. Kasi nga, nabigay na natin sa client. So, we have to reduce the value of our uh, premium cap. So, to record the earned portion of the uh, transaction or the earned portion of the premium items, so this will be the journal entry. So, debit ka lang ng unearned revenue, 267,176. Then, credit sales, 267,176. So, this is the formula. 
So, nakinig pong mabuti. So, nakuha natin yung 276. Of course, we have to get first the items redeemed. So, given naman yan sa problem, since the coupons redeemed on 2021 is 70,000 pesos divided by sa coupons required for each item. So, divided by 10, 70,000 divided by 10. The result will be 7,000 premium items. And divide natin yan sa estimated premium to be redeemed for future years. So, we have two. Number one, which is regarding or related to past years. And the second one is related to the current year sale. Past years, we have 2,000. And now, we have 7,500. Nakuha natin yung 7,500 to 50,000 times rate of redemption of 30%. So, they divide natin yan sa 10. So, the result will be 7,500. So, the total amount or the total premium items to be redeemed for future years would be 2,000 plus 7,500. That is 9,500 units. So, ang gagawin po natin, ipoplorate natin. So, ang i-redeem lang or ang re-recognize lang natin revenue is related dun sa ating 7,000 premium items redeemed. So, the computation should be 7,000 divided by 9,500. So, ita-times natin yan doon sa balance ng ating unearned revenue portion. So, nung 2020, we have 229 in 8 pesos. Then, nag-recognize tayo ng 152,672 which we recognize in 2020, so ima-minus natin yan. So, 229, 8 pesos minus 152, 672, plus natin yung na-recognize natin this year, which is 286, 260, then uh, the result would be 267,176. Okay? So, for the recognition of the premium asset, so this will be our entry. So, debit lang tayo ng cash, 35,000. So, nakuha natin yung 35,000 because the coupons redeemed is 70,000 divided by the 10. So, meron tayong 7,000 7, times 5 pesos. The result will be 35,000 pesos as cash received. Then, the cost of goods sold, this is related to the premium expense na i-recognize -re natin. Dahil IFRS 15 tayo, hindi na tayo gagamit ng word na premium expense kundi cost of goods sold. So, 20 times 7,000. So, the result will be 140. For the premium cup, it is 7,000 times 25, which is the cost of each cup. So, 175,000 pesos.